All right, as an acrylic pouring artist, we care about the opacity of paint because it is going to determine what colors we actually see. So here's a quick representation of opacity and transparency. I have two colors, an, uh, a transparent version and an opaque version of each. Now, if I layer an opaque version of orange on top of an opaque version of purple, do I see any purple? No, because the light is hitting the opaque color, it's all coming back off, and it's never getting through the orange down to the purple. Now if I do the same thing with a transparent orange, then yes, I do see the purple through the orange and I see this new color because one is opaque, one is transparent. Same thing with two transparents. I can see both of the colors and then whatever is underneath also. So with acrylic pouring, when we're layering our paints, we definitely want to know, is our paint transparent and is it opaque? Now there's some really cool science behind this, but there are a bunch of artists that have done some great videos on that. I recommend you watch this video by Sandrine Muzi. She's a watercolor artist, but the science for the paints is exactly the same. And I would recommend you give that a watch. Now as acrylic pour, an acrylic pour artist, I have used a lot of different paints, especially with the testing that I'm doing. And I'm always trying to figure out what the opacity of the paint is. Now many, Paints actually show them, but they show them differently on every bottle. Now this is Master's Touch, and they have a opacity rating, and a box that's full is opaque, a box that's half full is semi-opaque or semi-transparent, and then a box that is empty is transparent. And then you have somebody like Artist Loft, they're level one and level two, which they do the same thing except for they actually tell you See, in this case, it's a open box and they say transparent and it's a half done box and they say semi-transparent. Now there's others like the Artist Loft Professional that they don't tell you whether it's transparent or opaque, but they actually paint a swath over a black mark to show you whether it is transparent, semi-transparent. You know, in this case, these both would probably be semi-transparent because you can see the black through them. There are others like the Grumbacher that they just have the words semi-transparent. I guess it would be up here for English. Semi-transparent. And then others that just have the box like Arteza, they just show you here. I have a semi-transparent here and an opaque here. Now, the problem we come into is when you get to craft paints like Craft Smart or the Blacrylic, these don't tell you whether the paint is transparent or opaque or anything in between. So we want to figure that out. So what I've done is I've created this opacity check PDF that you can actually quickly, for your own paints, do a test to see whether your paints are transparent or opaque. Now I have done a bunch of colors here. I've done a bunch of blacrylic, one of the studio blacrylic, blacrylics, some Grumbacher paint, just to show you how this works. Now in this case, I have the Blacrylic Blue, Thalo Blue, and what I've done is I've painted on a swath over the top of the black mark. Now normally I paint once, let it dry, and then paint a second time because I think that gives you the best test on whether your paint is transparent or opaque. Now in this case, I would call this uh, semi-opaque because it has, I can still see the black through it, but it's not very easy to see through it. My bright aqua green, I can hardly see the black at all, so I would call this opaque. My chrome yellow, I can see lots of black through it, so I would call this most likely transparent. My blacrylic titanium white and my studio titanium white, the blacrylic, you can actually see the black a little bit through it because it's not as high quality of paint, so it would be uh, opaque or semi-opaque. The studio, you can't see near as much of the black in between, so that would be considered opaque. My Bacrylic Ultramarine Blue is definitely transparent. You can see the black really well through. Bacrylic Magenta is more like semi-transparent. You can, you can see the black pretty well, but it does cover some. And then this is the Grumbacher Covering White, which is a transparent white. Sorry, not covering white. I wrote that wrong. Mixing White, which is a very transparent white. 
So all you're doing to do with the sheet is you're gonna fill out the brand of paint that you're using, the paint line, so you can group your Artist Loft Level 3 Professional, or you can group your you know, Artist Loft Level 1 all together with the paint line. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a painting utensil. I like to use one of these flat brushes because I think it gives uh, a good swath of paint on there. You could use a palette knife and just give a very thin look to, or a very thin layer of paint over the black. But I'm gonna show you a couple that I have done. So I wanna show you this Craftsmart. Um, this is neon orange. So I'm gonna guess this is very transparent. So in this case, I'm just gonna find me a little bit. And I do want to let that dry. Um, wet is not gonna show you whether the, they're transparent or opaque, although you might be able to tell. You really wanna let them dry. So another interesting thing while I'm doing this that I wanna check is I actually have the Artist Loft Level 1 Ultramarine Blue and the Artist Loft Level True Ultramarine Blue, but look, this one is semi-transparent and this one is transparent, and I wanna see what the difference between these two are. So we're gonna paint a little bit of each of these. And again, I'm just covering above and below. That was a little more paint than I wanted. And then the other one I wanted to check was a craft white paint. And we're gonna let those dry and be right back. All right, so these paints have had a little while to dry. Now you can see the Craft Smart Neon really lost a lot of its luster. You can see right here it's not quite dry where you get the nice orange. And here it's kind of lost a lot of its luster. But you can clearly see the black line in between. And that's pretty normal for neon colors. They're usually very transparent, although because of the pigments that they used in here, this, this I would call semi-transparent and not very bright for the craft. Now here's the Artist Loft Level 2 Ultramarine Blue, which was semi-transparent. And you can, you can see the black line pretty defined, but not near as much as the Artist Loft Level 1 Ultramarine Blue. So this one was transparent, this one was semi-transparent, which does kind of show, show there. This just has more pigment in it and just looks a little bit darker and covers a little bit better. And here's our white from Craftsmart. It covered really well, but it is very chalky and very, it has a lot of texture to it. It's because they're not using as fine or high quality of pigments. So that's why Craft White, especially in paintings, really takes over because it's opaque and nothing, you don't see anything when light hits the white paint, you don't see what really what's underneath. So the last thing I wanted to show you is acrylic pour artists. We mix our paint with medium. And when you mix your paint with a medium and the medium dries clear, which almost all of the acrylic pouring mediums dry clear, you are actually lowering the opacity of your paint. You're making it more transparent by mixing a pouring medium. And to show that, I have this Blacrylic uh, Magenta paint. This is just straight paint. This one with the stick is two parts pouring medium, one part paint, and I'm using the Color Pour pouring medium, just cheap, transparent pouring medium. And I wanna show you the difference when I do the same test. So already without letting that dry, you can see the difference in color because I have essentially diluted the paint twice over. Now, the more pigmented the paint, the less you're gonna notice that. But also, even just this first swipe, you can see the red is really covering the black a little bit in the middle, but here the red is hardly covering at all. This is very transparent. This is semi-transparent. And if I painted another layer on, this would almost cover nothing more, and this would do a little bit more 
As you can see with this one, that's painted twice from my previous test. So we also need to keep in mind when we mix our pouring medium with our paint, we are always lowering the opacity. So if a paint starts out as very opaque like this one, and we do two parts pouring medium to one part paint, this all of a sudden turns into semi-opaque. And if we have a semi-opaque, we add pouring medium, we're really dropping it down to more like semi-transparent. And again, it depends on your the quality of your paint. The higher the quality, the less the shift. The lower the quality, usually the more the shift you're going to get. So I have this sheet available to you guys. I will put a link in the description below and in the pinned comment below. You can download it, put it in a, th you know, cut three holes in it, put it in a three ring binder and just keep track of all the paints that you used and their opacity so you can refer back to that. Now that you know how opacity affects your paints, you really wanna watch this video that talks about how to layer your opaque and transparent paints to get the best acrylic pour you can get.